there and welcome to Legal Break. I'm Maureen Akers and with me today is Gary Bruce as Good always on Wednesday. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us again. Glad to be well, here. Well, we have another viewer question, which these are um, can be very interesting. This one wrote in kind of about per personal injury that happened at a local restaurant. Um, she, Jennifer asked if someone si suffers minor injuries from a fall, should she still file a suit for pain and suffering? Interesting. All right. It is interesting, and I appreciate the question because it gives us a chance to talk about what these things are. Yeah. So does she have a case, I think, Against, was her, yeah. because it was a minor injury. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Minor is sometimes in the eye of the beholder, you know, so right. I, I don't know how to <laughs> quite to define that. But what she has to prove is that there was a duty, a breach of that duty, and that caused injury. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have a problem that a spill that doesn't get cleaned up, but nobody falls in it, so there's no case there. Right. If you have a spill that somebody knows about and they, they don't clean it up and somebody falls and are injured, then there can be a case there because there was a breach of the duty that caused injury. So does she have a case? Maybe. Is it worth pursuing? That's a whole nother deal. And is it worth filing a lawsuit over? Well, that's a third oh, question, right. you know, because litigation is expensive. And sometimes it just doesn't warrant that. So, so a lot of times, frankly, we encourage people just get it resolved. Try and take care of it yourself. If you run into problems with it, then we can help if, if it's worth the expense. But expense is really a, a real component in, in the law. Yeah. So a and and again, if it's if it's a minor injury, um, the the pain and suffering actually could be could be longer with a drawn out process if it is something that you can get resolved, right? Well, minor injury and pain and suffering are not necessarily the same thing. It might not be much to me, but it's a but big it's deal to you, okay. you know, because yeah. what is pain and suffering? It's not just ouch, it hurts. It's the interference with your life. Mm -hmm. It's the interference or inability for you to do the things you love to do. Mm -hmm. uh, an impairment of your ability to, your capacity to earn and labor, impairment of your bodily health, confinement, fear and extent of the injury even as a component. So pain and suffering is a big area. It is, very and, broad. And huh? so maybe a broken finger doesn't mean much to me, but it does to a professional baseball player. So minor is really all in the eye of the beholder <laughs> it again. Is, it so. is, can be very, um, very subjective or, or even objective to depending on the case and what's going on. So uh, how do you prove it? How do you prove it? You prove it with facts. You prove it with the uh, testimony of your doctors and your friends and your co-workers and your family and, and juries hear all that and then apply the law mm -hmm. to what they feel is uh, a fair resolution for it. There you so go. Well, that's thank how you, you do it. That's how you do it, right? So thank it's you. That so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds easier. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today, Gary, and I look forward to seeing you on the very next Legal Break.